So we'll move on to the end now. And just a few things to do here. This is important. I find this quite useful. If I find a disk, a spare disk I've got with Linux from scratch on it, I want to know what version it is I've installed. And by putting this file in at any time, I can just do cat etc lfs release, find out what version of it it is and decide if I want to keep it or not. These um, will they're part of the standards. They're also used by um, parts of BLFS as I remember there's a package in there you can install that extracts this information. So the only thing that you need to do here is to put your own name in. So you can either copy and paste it in like I've done and add your own name in afterwards with VI like that or the other way you can do it is copy partially the config here type your name in there and then finish copying the rest of the config file so now in etc we've got lfs release it says 10.1 we've also got lsb release which is all those lines there and we've also got an os release file as well So next get counted. So you can click on this link and become a registered LFS user. Last thing to do is reboot the system. Now there's certain other packages here which are in the BLFS book. Um, I'm not going to install them now but I will do an additional video installing these because they are extremely useful if you, if you want to go further and install other packages on LFS. Um, Lynx is a, te a text browser which allows you to browse within the terminal without a, a graphical environment. GPM is useful because it allows you to use a mouse in the terminal the same way as you would do with a GUI. Um, DHCPD um, and DHCP I don't use because I use static IP addressing but if you want to have your IP address allocated automatically then you'll want to use that. Um, but I won't be showing that. Sudo can be useful for installing um, as an ordinary user. I won't be showing that because I won't be showing the um, uh, adding an, an ordinary user. That's part of the BLFS. Um, and the first few chapters of BLFS are designed really to be going gone through sequentially. It's the only part of BLFS that's like that. The rest of it is designed to be a sort of... Um, you pick and choose what you want to install. It's not like Linux from scratch where it's a, a recipe you follow from beginning to end. So I won't be installing that. I will install OpenSSH and that allows you to access the machine remotely. So as you might appreciate, we won't have a GUI, but by accessing remotely, you can, you can use a GUI environment to copy and paste commands from a, um, a browser into the remote terminal and carry on installing software packages that way and wget is useful to have just to fetch other packages because at the moment there's there is a way to fetch packages but it's a bit limited so i will skip over that for now um, i will come back to that um, so let's log out of the truth environment and unmount all of the linux from scratch partitions we've got mounted including the virtual terminals and finally we'll do a reboot so i'm going to paste that command in there so if i do shut down now remember bear in mind i'm going to lose any settings i've got in the browser and so on any bookmarks so if you have a boot from the um a live cd and you have made bookmarks or made any notes or anything on files bear in mind you're going to lose all that apart from that shut down minus R now and keep our fingers crossed that the system will boot. I'm going to remove the USB stick as well when it boots to make sure we don't boot from that. Go into the um, BIOS to modify how it boots. 
Um, or in fact, I should be able to boot it from here. So legacy boot is what I want. Um, it saves me having to make any changes in the BIOS, luckily, having this menu. So I'm going to just click on that. And there we are. There's our grub with Linux 5.10.17, LFS 10.1. There it is booting, and you can see the console font has changed um, to uh, a rather netty little one. And it's booted successfully with no errors. So I can log in now as root. It's the only user on there. I need to use the password that I set previously. And there we are, bash 5.1. There's the system details. So you can see it's Linux LFS. 10-1 is the, I haven't got a cursor so I can't, oh, so I have, hang on, let's use this one. There's the system, LFS 10-1 is the host name, so if I type host name in fact, you can see it there, there's the kernel version, the date the kernel was built, the architecture and the operating system, GNU Linux. And as before, I can do cat etc um, LFS release and there it is 10.1 I can do LSB release to get this information here and finally the OS release as well so you can see that this is the system that's just been built so I hope you found that useful um, and enjoyed watching the videos as I say, I'm going to do one more video with those supplementary um, packages from BLFS, which um, if you want to carry on building on what we've built already, they will be very handy. Um, otherwise, this, this ends the standard Linux from scratch build. Um, if you did it purely for educational readers, reasons, you don't need to go any further. If you want to learn more, then yep, go further and start installing BLFS. But thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to hear about more videos, then subscribe to my channel. And I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you've enjoyed any of the videos that I've made. Thank you very much. Goodbye.